This is Penn Sunday School, and to our listening ears, all angels sing and round us rings the music of the saints. This is Penn Sunday School. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Penn Sunday School. Go, Penn, go. Welcome to Penn Sunday School. My name is Matt Donnelly. This week, we are broadcasting live from Scoop Fest 2017. This week, Penn and Teller have a new slot machine at the Rio, which made Penn gamble. This this song's making Penn dance. And Penn's also become a sports fan. It's a weird week. It's a weird week. Here he is preaching the love, Penn Gillette. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello. Um, I must apologize uh, for my voice. Uh, I've talked about this before. I'm going to get uh, an allergy panel on Wednesday. Oh. They're going to stick things in my back and figure out what I'm allergic to, which I think is the desert. I was picturing like a panel, like a Senate panel. I'd be like, Mr. Yeah. Gillette, when was the last time you had refined sugar? <laughs> <laughs> How, let's see the upper left. Get that little mosquito bite there. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I then will have a series of shots that they say don't do anything for nine months. Nine months to a year, and then my allergies are supposed to be gone. So now I'm off all the medications that were working. Oh, in order to in order to do a permanent fix. Okay. So last night the uh, the Penn and Teller show a little trouble with the voice. Tonight a lot of trouble. Yeah. I'm blowing it out here, and then tonight I'll be uh, I'll be uh, I'll be sounding like someone on the Andy Griffith show. All right. Or actually Green Acres, right, Mr. Haney? Mr. Haney? I'll, I'll be that that kind of voice uh, breaking up. So I've got tea, I've got lozenges, I've got water, I've got breast implants. I'll try to get uh, I'll try to get through the show. What if you just started doing like some of Teller's tricks? I know that's people always say, you know, there is a story that is told by um, I think it's one of Harpo's daughters uh -huh. that she went on the road with the Marx Brothers mm. for one whole summer, and she would come to every show they did. And it was really important to her father and uncle that she be at every show, every show, and she was a teenager. And one afternoon, she snuck off to uh, go shopping instead of watching the Marx Brothers show. She snuck off, went shopping, and then snuck back in afterwards. And uh, Harpo and Chico came backstage in each other's makeup, laughing hysterically. And they'd done the whole show for her in reverse characters. Wow. And she didn't see it. Wow. Because, you know, the Marx Brothers looked very much alike. Right. Uh, and uh, it was just the makeup they did that, that gave them the different looks, which is also like the Stooges. You know, the fat guy in the Stooges and the thin guy in the Stooges were virtually the same weight. Right. You know, Curly and Moe were not that different in weight or in size, but one was the fat guy, one was the thin guy. We used to have people who looked identical playing very different parts. It was right. part of American showbiz. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, you know, Teller and I could, people always say, do you have reverse roles? Uh, okay. And uh, we haven't because I don't know how some of the tricks are done. <laughs> and you know, we discovered that a few times, you know, usually during the Q and A's. Yeah. When people have asked, and I've tried to tell a story about how we, you know, do a trick. I try to give it away and tell us sits there going, we haven't done it like that for ten years. <laughs> we changed it, we revised it, we didn't tell you. I operate in the Penn and Teller show on a need to know basis. <laughs> so there are um, whole sections of the Penn and Teller show. I have no idea how they're done and I don't care. <laughs> to me, that's work that's below me. <laughs> it's not that I don't, you would never use the cliche above my pay grade. Right. It's like I also don't know exactly what dishwashing detergent they're using at the Denny's. <laughs> that's my feeling of magic methods. Let other people do that. That's janitorial skills. You guys make the tricks work, I'll present them and make them good. <laughs> that's, that's my limited perspective on how, uh, how the Penn and Teller show works. So to me, my voice is more important than all Teller's stupid little threads and fake pockets and <laughs> all that jive he has going on. But there are tricks in the show that I actually do. Right. And I don't even understand how those are working either. <laughs> Teller just says, stick your hand in your pocket, pull this out, give it to me, don't see you. 
Okay. <laughs> Fine. It's once again it's like the Marx Brothers. Um, you, you know that Harpo supposedly um, during uh, during World War II did some spy stuff. Did you know that? I did not know that. Was, they were actually touring around that area, and he was, of course, uh, uh, anti-Nazi. What? You know, Bold sure. choice. Bold choice. You know, our, our Arthur. Uh, the you times know, they are changing. <laughs> Arthur Marx, Harpo Marx. His yeah. real name was Adolf Marx. Did you know that? I did not know that. And he changed it because he's a big cry baby. He didn't want the name Adolf. And, um, but he what did. What would you do if, like, the next president was Penn Hitler? <laughs> and, like, really fucked up our country? I would change my name to Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Two birds, one stone. <laughs> um, you it know, is strange. Last, uh, last time we did Scoop Fest, it was the weekend after Donald Trump was elected. Really? Yeah. Really? We were despondent. We we were we were actually were cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Well, that's gone away. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so Harpo was given a briefcase of papers. Yeah. That he never knew what they were, and he was told, "Don't let this get searched as you go across the border." Wow. So he passed it off as like prop stuff and joked his way through. But there was something he did for the war effort that we will never know. He never opened the suitcase, never knew what was in it. You know, it could have been, it could have been the NSA going, <laughs> let's make, let's make Harpo think he's doing something. <laughs> let's give just, him this to bring across the board. Just some, some agent got like, oh, I got the Harpo case. <laughs> oh, Bradley, <Yeah>. you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, I, that's the way I am with the Penn and Teller show. I have no yeah. idea how it's working. I, no, I would have no problem that opening that case. I know you wouldn't either. You would, you would not open it? No, not Oh, no, chance. I don't want to know that. No. I don't want to know that because I, I would not be able to act under torture like I don't know. <laughs> you have to really make sure I don't know. Yeah. Because actually, under torture, I would give up like that. As a matter of fact, I would say two and a half minutes in the Cir uh, Circus Vargas porta potties, and I give up all the national secrets like that. <laughs> I tell you where to place a bomb in Manhattan. Yeah, I, 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 never mind waterboarding, just those porta potties at um, Circus Vargas. I would cry. You know, I once was going to see Circus Vargas in LA with Stephen Banks, Billy the Mime. Yeah. He called me up and wanted to go see Circus Vargas, and I said, yes, but first we have to stop at a shoe store. Because I wanted to buy shoes so I could go into the Circus Vargas porta potties, <laughs> piss, and then throw my shoes away in the car. Before I got back in the car, I threw my shoes away. So I get a, I get a pair of, you know, um, a size 15 yeah. um, uh, waterproof yeah. shoes of the cheapest I could get, wore them in for the circus, got out to Steven's car, took my shoes off, threw them away, put my sneakers back on. I, uh, I do the same thing at Circus Circus. <laughs> they do not want water permeable shoes in Circus no, Circus. No. Well, they have the campgrounds out back. It's, it's um, all disgusting. It is. And you know, Circus Circus used to be uh, the primo casino right. in Vegas. If you yeah. watch it, what is it not Thunderball? You only live twice? Which is the James Bond that happens in Vegas? Oh, come on. <laughs> Somebody knows that. Yeah, diamonds are forever, yeah. Diamonds are forever. I, it, it should have been one voice yeah. shouting it out. but it, I mean, one collective voice shouting out. He said it was one lone, smart person in the wilderness. I know. And it could have been like a group like condescending voice. Like, uh, diamonds it's are forever. forever. Yeah. yeah. But during diamonds are forever, they do the girl to gorilla gag, everything. And Circus Circus is the happening. Because now I heard, a, I heard a story. Probably not true. Right. Probably not true, but told to me with such conviction and sworn up and down and giving me footnotes that I wouldn't check <laughs> by a person who knew I wouldn't check them. Sure. So it's hard to say. But I was told that um, there was Circus Circus, there was New York, New York, and the advertising firm that worked on their imaging mm -hmm. was asked to, um, to take over uh, the Luxor before they built the Luxor was asked to do their advertising, and they wanted a clear, and I don't ever use this word unless it's in the, as a pejorative, they wanted to do a brand for the casino. And they hired this team that had done these other two casinos to give them a brand and a name and everything else. And the Luxor people went to them, showed them the sketches, and said, we need this named and a brand, and they suggested calling it Pyramid Pyramid. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
collected their paycheck on that. Well, you got Circus Circus, you got New York, New York. Why not Pyramid Pyramid? It's as if like they came back in and like the guy's like, I'm here for my three o'clock, and they check the calendar and they're like, Oh, one second. And then back in like, we've never done one thing with this account in a month. I, I think it's I think it's worse than that. Because <laughs> see, you are being so optimistic about the people in Vegas. I believe they worked on it three months. <laughs> Every day in meetings with yellow legal pads in front of them. Yeah. Very intense people in their 30s dressed exactly right. So they're going, mm, Pharaoh's pyramid. throne sounds like a toilet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah can't do that. Can't do that. Uh, Guys, uh, Pyramid Pyramid's been up on the board for a week, and we've yet to cross it off. Yeah, it's good. It seems good. You guys don't get anything up here on the board besides Pyramid. Because you got the name, yeah. then you got the name again. Yeah. So if it takes you 16 mentions to register something, we do it in eight. <laughs> And then one guy goes, I got a way to do it in two. <laughs> and we go, wait a minute, is that binary bill over there? Is that binary bill is everything in base two? I'd like to check into pyramid, 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 pyramid. I'm sorry, it's pyramid, 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 pyramid. I'm at the wrong hotel. Yes. <laughs> that was uh, that was the plan. No, I can't believe that's true. But somebody who listens to this show should be able to research. It was supposedly in a book. Okay. A book called How to Fuck with Pat. <laughs> But a book all the same. No, someone was reading A History of Vegas and said that that That's was actually amazing. It. So the person who told it to me completely believed it, which means nothing. Look yeah. at the anti-vax movement. It means nothing that someone believes in. Your faith in something does not affect the accuracy of it. Right. How much you believe in it does not affect that. But the big thing is, uh, how about these sports guys, huh? <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, I know. Bill Russell. Yes. Okay, Bill Russell, brilliant political, brilliant basketball player. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad Ali, yeah. Vietnam War, the uh, the uh, the Olympic athletes who did the clenched fist uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, on the um, the Olympics thing. Yeah. All of those people, heroes. But seeing it happen in real time when I'm not a child is stunning. Yes. And uh, I think that I, I go a step further than everybody else has gone. I think when any president demands that you stand up at any time, you do not do it. Okay. To do anything else is un-American. I don't care if it's the great, I don't care if it's Thomas Jefferson telling you to stand up during something. You must, if you respect the founding fathers at all, not stand up. Right. And I also, you know, this thing that Donald Trump does that I believe my children were unable to get away with after they were six, of saying, I'm not coming to your party at the White House. That's okay, you're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody falling for that? And, and he done also it. has done a worse thing, yeah. which is, oh, linking arms, that's a good thing. Did you see that tweet? Yeah. He did a tweet saying linking arms is what he wanted. Soon it'll be, oh, they're kneeling. That's what I wanted them to do. <laughs> it's like having a dog that's just running around at random and giving him commands afterwards. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. Sniff her crotch. Good. Run over there. Lick something off the floor. Good. Good dog. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's throwing a dart and then drawing a target around it. He's doing that. But I now am in the situation where if, if, um, if uh, Donald Trump calls for a serious boycott of the NFL, yeah. I'm in a position to go to a football game. All right. Because, uh... I hear there's, there's been a couple of first... I may have overstated it. I'm in a position to buy a ticket to a football game. <laughs> uh, I, would I would want to give them money, but I don't know if I really want to... I don't mind giving them my money, but I'm not sure I want to invest my time. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, I could have someone bring one of the inflatables of Penn & Teller and have that sit in the seat next to them so I, I can stand up, or in this case, blow up and be counted. You know, they, they see me there, and I, I think that that inflatable can take a knee, as they say. Right, yeah, yeah. And I also, another time, another amazing thing, I'm agreeing with Ed Asner. 
Wow. That's never happened. No. No. As a matter of fact, I did this um, autism um, benefit, not a benefit for autism, but a benefit yeah. to help people, people yeah. with autism, um, which uh, John Stewart ran. Oh, out yeah, yeah. of uh, it was Smigel out of um, out of New York, and I was there answering phones with you know all, all these uh, people more famous than me, and sitting next to me was Ed Asner, and Ed Asner said to me, "Are you a libertarian?" I said yes. Then he started hitting me, semi playfully, but really hitting, <laughs> and he actually tweeted, uh, "I will take a knee on Sunday, but someone might have to help me up." <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm in favor of that. So uh, this is someone, I'm someone, I believe, who understands boycotts. Yeah. If you do not go to something, not going is not a boycott. But if you don't go to something, other people boycott it, and then you go, that is a very successful anti-boycott. Right. I can actually, and I could actually buy more than one ticket. Look at you. I could. I could. <laughs> Look at you. I cannot. <laughs> But is there a, uh, boy, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm not sure of it. I'll ask it in the way I think the answer is. There's not a National Football League show in Vegas. Is that right? <laughs> there's not, they, we don't have, there's no NFL in Vegas. Show? <laughs> Competition. Yes. Game. Game is Game. the word you're looking for. By the way, it's show business, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yet. Not yet, but they're talking about that. No, it's definitely happening. Hockey. They're doing hockey? Hockey's already here. Okay. Just started. It's called the Golden something. Showers. Showers. Um. <laughs> no, it's, it's ice, so it's frozen golden showers. <laughs> we skate on the yellow ice. <laughs> that, I, would love, I would go to every game. Would that be great? Would that be great? I'd be like... You know why the ice is yellow? They're like, we all know why the ice is yellow. <laughs> it's because they're the Golden Knights. Yeah, because of the Golden Knights. It's the Golden Knights. But isn't it? No, never mind. It's, that's why it is. Golden Knights. <laughs> it's not yellow. It's golden. <laughs> we they, have that. Do we have a basketball team? We do not. Do we have a baseball team? We do not. We have, we have a minor a league baseball team. team. Right. The, I've been to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Aliens or something. The 51s. Yeah. Because yeah. Aliens is too awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, uh, the Raiders are coming here. The well, Raiders are a big football team. They are. I'll tell you, let me tell you everything about the Raiders. Let's go. Black and white, pirate patch on the helmet. Yes. Dead on. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And originally, Los Angeles. Yes. Yes. Black and silver. Black and silver. All right. <laughs> you notice, different guy who yelled black and silver from the guy who yelled diamonds are forever. Yes, that's true. Not one person with all the information, but the, the hive mind here at ScoopFest. Uh, for those of you listening at home, Penn flipped off that guy. No, I didn't. <laughs> Scratched my head. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. But, uh, but black and silver, wicked close to black and white, right? Close enough? Closer, clo as close as gold and yellow? <laughs> what we'll call that for you, sir, is foreshadowing. <laughs> Veiled threat? Maybe. <laughs> At least foreshadowing. Maybe veiled threat. Uh, what other sports extravagant what do we have in here? <laughs> uh, we have, well, college football, obviously, UNLV. Why is that obvious? Oh, sorry. We have a college here. <laughs> But does every college have football? Uh, MIT doesn't have football, does they? No, they figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, in your extracurricular activity, you could do something to give you brain damage. <laughs> I'm already in the bottom half of my class. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> or they go to play a team, and suddenly they wake up, and they're at the top of some tower upside down. <laughs> How did we get here? All the pranks. Okay, so uh, that joke was terrible. You told I, it, uh, and then explained it, and I still did. they didn't like it. I know. <laughs> Um, what, so we're going to have a, uh, an NFL team here? Yes, the Raiders are going to come here and play uh, when? shows um, <laughs> uh, next year. Isn't that really hard? I guess they, they move anyway, right? But, I mean, I thought the Raiders were a really important football team in L.A. It is. I mean, important enough that I've heard of them. It is. And they're black and silver. Every, uh, every silver. organization 
uh, demand, starts to demand uh, stadiums. And if they can't get the stadium they want, they threaten to move. And in the past, every town has coughed up uh, taxpayer money to pay for that stadium. But presumably stadium. they already had a stadium. Yes, they did. But it's, it wasn't good enough. It's just antiquated. Uh-huh. So I know that this is a very, very... Uh, 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 so it's a bad thing we do, stealing money from taxpayers to pay really rich football people, right? Yes. There's no way it ever helps anybody. They always say it helps the economy out, but that argument usually doesn't work Never out. has. Right? No. Never once. No. Like casinos in Atlantic City. And that's why Las Vegas decided they would privately fund it and then didn't. And, you, <laughs> and use taxpayers' money to do it anyway. That's always the way Vegas yeah. does everything. Yeah. We're going to privately fund this, just kidding. Yes. And when the first press release goes out, that's where they do it. Yeah. And they change when no one cares. It was just $750 million. It's not a big a deal. No, no. Yeah. And spread out over 750 <laughs> of you. <laughs> and it's not like, I mean, our schools are thriving. So, yeah. like, what are, what are we, we going to do? Schools and medical care, we got down. <laughs> we can do that. We're, we're there with, uh, with Arkansas and Hawaii, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not going to be anything like that monorail deal. <laughs> yeah. Boy, the monorail deal was good, wasn't it? Oh, my God. You know who was there pimping it at the opening? Who's that? Me! <laughs> I just want to show you that the hypocrisy is alive and well with Pendulum. And did you get like uh, like talking points and the word airport was crossed out in red? <laughs> yeah. Do not talk about the airport. Yeah, we were told, uh, you know, we were told keep it light and positive. <laughs> Say monorail like Disneyland. Say free a lot. Say the word free a lot. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> uh, so they just move over here. We're gonna, they're building a stadium here? Yes. Where is it, downtown or something? It's going to be, I think, uh, You know the why strip, off the strip. they're able to uh, rape the taxpayers here? Why is that? Because people like me don't pay attention. <laughs> oh, they're building a stadium? <laughs> oh. And what money? Where? Yeah. If it's I paid true. attention and voted, uh, me, people like me. We even have like a local elected libertarian per, or the party person, mm-hmm. and that person voted for, the, for that. <laughs> That person voted to have seven fifteen million. Oof, <laughs> oof. Like, that's that seems that seems like a little bit of a betrayal. And then there'll party. be the uh, the Raiders here. Yeah, the Raiders will be here, and, and all your kids year. will have eye patches, which is good for you because you want to go, but you don't want to watch the game, so you could just like put like internet in your eye patches. <laughs> you take like, a Google Glass, but with eye patches. Oh yeah, just, yeah. You can watch whatever you want on there. Yeah, it'd be good. I want. Yeah, I want to. Uh, but I'm really uh, the other thing. Did you, did you get that one tweet? Because I I have it. I first of all. Uh, 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 LeBron James. Yes. Uh, probably the most poetic, perfect tweet I have ever seen. I don't know that tweet. Uh, you bum. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then he went on to explain that beautiful. The other person, another sports figure who tweeted, um, if, you wa- if you want sports figures to stay out of politics, maybe the president should stay out of sports. <laughs> A beautiful <laughs> argument. And then this one tweet that I read and went, wow. That kind of um, kind of made me feel really, really guilty. It was an eye-opening one. You have the, who's it? Martellus Bennett. And who is he? Martellus Bennett is a tight end in the league. I think he currently plays for the Bears. Packers is what I meant to say. Two different voices from the other two. This is a great group. Packers. <laughs> he was on the Bears last year. Before that, the Giants. Before that, the Cowboys. So don't fuck with me. Really good. And uh, uh, and so I play Dungeons and Dragons of football. <laughs> uh, fantasy football. So um, uh, the idea of real Donald Trump thinking that suggesting firing me from football confirms that he thinks that's all I can do as a black man. Now, I don't, I don't think I'm guilty of the overt racism that that, uh, that, that tweet uh, suggests. Right. But I certainly am very guilty of thinking that people who play sports can't do anything else. Yeah. And I know that that is wrong, wrong, wrong. I know there's a math professor who, who played. I know that the amount of processing, pure brain processing that a quarterback does yeah. uh, in a short period of time is greater than probably any other mental challenge done. I mean, you're really up there with, I mean, it really is a level of genius that I can't even imagine. I know all that intellectually, and yet, when I thought about them, I mean, the, uh, the bravery of that, whether it means I can be a math professor, or whether it means I'm willing to work in 7-Eleven, that is something that a hero tweets. Yeah. And I gotta say that even though I don't feel um, the personal racism from that, I'm sure 
that at some level it plays into my feeling about sports. And I say that with a, with a great deal of guilt, and I thank him for opening, opening my eyes. And it's wonderful that the sports people are uh, joined together in doing this. Uh, I would like to see what happens if, uh, I mean, aren't there more football fans than there are Donald Trump fans? Yes. In terms of actual numbers? Yes. I mean, more people watch the Super Bowl than voted for Donald Trump. Is that true? Am I making that up? No, that's true. I didn't read that anywhere or anything. I'm just saying it must be. Yeah. Because, you know, nobody voted for Donald Trump. Oh, over 100 million people watched the Super Bowl. And yeah. Did he get 100 million votes? No, he got 60. Okay. So uh, football is more popular than Ish. our president. Yes. So uh, it seems like watching this go ahead. It's, it's more fun, fun to ask it this way. Do you think there's a guy who likes football who just didn't get motivated to go out and vote? Maybe. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. He, he turns on the team and maybe yeah. really likes football. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, maybe Wicked likes football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be, would be motivated enough to go out and vote if it got him to see a football game on his TV. One of my uh, favorite tweets from the situation, uh, and I don't know who said it, uh, was uh, when Donald Trump called for people to not go to games and stop watching on TV if, if, they, if, the, if the protests kept happening. And the guy wrote, yeah, do that, because that's kind of dot, dot, dot. Like a dot, 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 protest? (laughs) (laughs) Which I loved a lot. It's Uh, just, uh, I mean, whenever you think uh, he's been as uh, as stupid as he could be, he goes stupid. Well, that's, and then still, and then you get these these counter tweets that are like, keep your eye on the prize. This is meant to be distracting. He's doing this on purpose. Uh, That's just not true. (laughs) The Machiavellian. Yeah. Uh, part of that is not true. Yeah. The fact that he feels helpless in the stuff that's real president yeah. and looks to the stuff that is a real president, I think is absolutely true. Yes. So I think you can, you can explain the Machiavellian intelligence yeah. with the random stupidity. Yes. And you get the same outcome in this case. <laughs> that is true. <clears throat> that is true. And there's, and, and there's only one guy right now I, I hope that it isn't true in the four, and that's uh, Robert, Robert Mueller. I hope he's not like, wait, what's no, going no, on in no, the NFL? No, no. I don't and then he's like just wrapped up in that. I don't ever want to call him Robert Mueller. Oh. Ever. Because I read in one article in the Times that his friends call him Bobby Three Sticks. Bobby Three Sticks? <laughs> Is that a good name? That's a great name. Bobby, because it's, it's Robert Mueller III. Uh, yeah. so he has the three after his name. They call him Bobby Three Sticks. Oh, that's wonderful. That's what his wonderful. buddy calls him. Yeah, I think uh, I have probably... Uh, built up Bobby Three Sticks in my mind beyond what he should be. Yeah. But I see him as this pure crusader. You know? <laughs> I see him as Ralph Nader if Ralph Nader had been correct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that you can't get anything on him, but Ralph Nader didn't matter because he was just batshit crazy and wrong. Uh, right. Imagine if... Ralph Nader were correct. Yeah. And they say that uh, Bobby Three Sticks does everything right. Yeah. They call him a Boy Scout, which is deadly. Also, the Boy Scouts are against the president. <laughs> uh, which is the greatest thing. You know, I, uh, trying to imagine. Imagine five years ago, they told you that there would be a situation in this country where the Boy Scouts would apologize for the president. <laughs> Couldn't come up with it. Well, that happened. Right. And Bobby Three Sticks is now, I even read that he's doing this thing that might be wicked smart. You know, when, um, when Trump uh, 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 pardoned the guy that we trashed on bullshit, Joe, whatever his name, Ar- Arapella. Arapaio. Uh, yeah. Um, when he pardoned him, as a signal saying, don't give up to Bobby Three Sticks, I'll pardon you. Bobby Three Sticks got in bed with a state guy ah. because he can't pardon state crimes. So he's doing, he seems like he's doing wicked smart stuff. Yes. And he seems like a great guy. <laughs> I'm just very, very happy with Bobby Three Sticks in every single way. Yeah. But I will also say, uh, Donald Trump is doing the full four years, maybe eight. You think maybe eight? I don't know about maybe eight, but I've been so wrong before. There were, in my mind, uh, exactly three people who were right about Donald Trump being elected from the beginning. Right. Okay. One was Michael Moore. Yeah. Who, oh, I just consider that to be a lucky dart throw. Yeah. Glenn Ally, the long-suffering Glenn. Right. As soon as Trump threw his hat in the ring, Don, uh, Glenn said, our next president, and never wavered from that. And the third one? Piff the magic dragon, right. who said, "I don't care what you guys are saying. He's going to go all. He's going to win. 
And there was what? that seal at the zoo who swam to that yeah. side. <laughs> picked Trump right off yeah, the bat. Yeah. And uh, never wavered. Uh, so they don't think, none of those three think he's going out before four. But here's the thing about Bobby Three Sticks. Uh, don't you love saying it? I, I can't stop. And um, is that your prediction of that if this is a true Greek tragedy, Donald Trump must end up in jail? Yeah, but would that be nice? I mean, I can actually feel my pants getting tighter in the in the, in the yeah. crotch region this when you say when you say Donald Trump going to jail. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. You know, I got to think about baseball to not finish, <laughs> and that's hard for me because I know nothing about baseball. <laughs> so it's kind of thinking about nothing. So in that moment, I become mindful. <laughs> I got your headspace hanging, is what I'm saying. <laughs> that's all. That's all your headspace workouts are there. Think about baseball. Okay, see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it goes away. I know nothing. I know that in baseball you have the same number of players that Jerry Garcia had fingers. That's all I know. Nine? Yeah. Okay, good. Jerry Garcia was missing a finger. Okay. You good. didn't know that? I don't think so. And you call yourself a baseball fan? <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, let's talk about stamps. Should we talk about stamps? Yes. I love stamps. Stamps saves you time and money, which you can use to grow your business. It's true. I can mail any letter, any pen. I'm not going to. But I could na- mail any letter, any package. You use my computer and a printer, and the, uh, the uh, parcel pickup person picks it up. A uh, postal per- carrier picks it up. Avoid the hassle of the post office and mail everything from postcards to envelopes to packages, domestic or international. Create your own stamps.com account in minutes online with no equipment to lease. Boy, you know, I was so happy when I print when we when we got our first postage meter. Yeah. Then it was such a drag after like a week. Yeah. Expensive and a pain. There's ink things to fill in. It's terrible. No long term commitments, which I think stamps.com should just run on no long term commitment. That should be their whole advertising thing. And yeah. not just for stamps. Everything in the world. No long-term <laughs> commitments. Sorry, Click. baby. I got stamps.com. Yeah. I'll see oh, you Oh, I understand. If you've got stamps.com, fine with me. <laughs> Click, print, mail, and you're done. done. I like the post office. Stamps.com never closes. Print postage for letters or packages at your convenience 24-7. Because sometimes at 4 a.m., I got to mail a package. <laughs> uh, convenient, easy, reliable, flexible. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your fingertips. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using your own computer and printer. Stamps.com makes it easy. They'll send you a digital scale, automatically calculates exact postage, and they'll help you figure out the best class of mail. Because I'll tell you, I, for one, do not understand postal classes at all. No. I use Stamps.com. Well, I don't use Stamps.com, but everybody who works for me uses Stamps.com. Uh, we use it for everything. If you send for an autographed picture of us or of Laura, lo- the long-suffering Laura will send you out that autographed picture using Stamps.com. And right now, you too can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special office that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. They thought they beat me, but they didn't. <laughs> Without long-term commitments. Without long-term commitments, any part of your life. Go to Stamps.com and click the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in... That's Stamps.com. Type in... Stamps.com. Enter... That's all you need to know right there. How many parcels could a parcel pickup person pick up (laughs) if the postage were purchased through Stamps? (laughs) Has anyone ever really found a needle in a haystack? Well, I have, actually. You use a magnet. We did it as a gag, yeah. Uh, of course not, it says, but it's not true. Uh, and those impossible odds are what it feels like when you apply for an SBA loan. That's why Smart Biz Loans was created. With 6 to 8% interest rates and low monthly payments, SBA loans are considered the gold standard of small business loans. Smart Biz Loans make SBA loans easy. They streamline the entire process, matching with one of their SBA preferred bank partners uh, that are the most likely to approve your loan. The whole process is simple, takes less than five minutes 
to pre-qualify and loans can be funded in just a few weeks. With features in Forbes and the Wall Street Journal and over half billion dollars funded in SBA loans, Smart Biz Loans is the most trusted place to apply for SBA loan. You need to grow your business. So forget the hay, the needle, and all that and visit smartbizloans.com, smartbizloans.com, and see what you pre-qualify for. Use promo code for $500 off your closing costs. That's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's Smart Biz, Lo- Smart Biz, B-I-Z, smartbizloans.com, promo code yeah. smartbizloans.com. Loans of a variable rate of prime interest plus 1.5% to 3.75%. Are you hiring? Am I? Okay, that's <laughs> You can post your job to 100 plus job sites with one click. Then their powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job better than anyone else. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you, it finds them. In fact, 80% of employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate through the site within one day. No juggling emails. Wait a minute. Wait, no. No juggling emails. Much Ah. better. Uh, or calls to your office. Simply screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one place with ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use dashboard. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash yeah. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash yeah. One more time Try it for free Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash yeah. Very, very nice Very nice So what else are going to talk about? Oh, you know something? People asked Last week I talked so much About how much I like constrained poetry Yes I raved about the guy who wrote The Whale yeah. I, I sung his praises And did not give his name His name And go look him up really Anthony Etherin E-T-H-E-R-I-N. Anthony Etherin, he writes constrained poems. And he writes stuff that are, uh, you know, palindrome and uh, use all the same letters. And he does all this stuff that's really beautiful. And some of his short, short constrained poems that are palindromatic, palindromic, are really, really wonderful. I love him. I can't wait to meet him next time I'm over in London. It'll be a great, great thing. I just really like him. Um... We also have a uh, slot machine now. Yes. Kind of tell the slot machine. And we turned them down, uh, uh, not these guys. We turned down other companies that wanted to do it because they just wanted to, like, paste our name on a slot machine. But here we are built deeply into it. We did, we recorded a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't play slot machines myself. Right. Uh, and that would seem to be like if you don't play slot machines yourself, why do you have a slot machine? I don't watch Jimmy Fallon. I don't watch real time. I don't watch any real of that kind of television. Yeah. Yet I go on. I also do my show at a casino, even though I don't play casino games. And as a libertarian, I think you have the right. I do not understand the joy of playing a slot machine, but I know that people do. And I've gone out um, with Caesars to talk to places about legalizing gambling. And um, I always quote uh, Winnie the Pooh. And Winnie the Pooh says in one of the books that his favorite, he says his favorite moment is when he gets honey. And then he corrects himself and says, my favorite moment is that time right before I know whether I'm going to get honey or not. And I think some people love that dopamine hit when the wheels are spinning, that they may win or they may not. And they really enjoy that. And who am I? There's all sorts of things people do, football, that they can watch and I don't enjoy, you know, right. and other people enjoy. So I, I'm not willing to be that. But we also put in some stuff that I think is really funny and perhaps a little more honest than a slot machine should be. <laughs> we have a moment where we say you have a chance of winning the big jackpot. And then a wheel comes up, and I say, when I say you have a chance, you probably think it's a chance like this. We show a pie chart. And I go, it's actually the same as the chance of you being hit by lightning right where you're standing. <laughs> so we actually play that. We also have a joke that I was sure. I'm so surprised a company went with that. Yeah, well, they, these guys are great. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, they, I actually did a joke that I pitched 
I didn't think there was a chance in hell they would let us do. Uh, and they let us do it. Uh, it has all the new slot machines, which is to say ours, because the other ones haven't come out yet. But the newer wave of slot machines over the next couple of years, but now ours, have an, a charger for your phone built right in. So you plug your phone right in when you're there. And as soon as you plug your phone in on our machine, I come on and go, now that you plugged your phone in, we don't care if you play the game. <laughs> <laughs> And then Teller and I pick up our iPhones and go, whoa, look at those pictures. And we scroll through your pictures on your screen while you're playing. I was sure when we pitched that and everybody laughed in the room, they were going to come back and go, what are, you, what are you, crazy? We can't do that. But it's in the machine. Wow. You plug your phone in, we do gags on that. And all the way through, there are gags and the real odds and stuff like that. Because I do believe... I know people who play slot machines that are fully aware of the odds. Yeah. You know, and seem to understand the odds and do that. Although I'll tell you, one day uh, I was in the uh, casino with Rob Pike, who is now head scientist at Google and was at the time a Bell Lab scientist. He's the one that has the patent on asynchronous windows for computers. Um, wow. <laughs> and, uh, and Rob is wicked, wicked smart. So we were at a, uh, a, a coffee shop in Vegas, and they were still, when they had Kino runners, they go around going, Kino, Kino, and you go, oh, she lost her dog. Kino, <laughs> Kino, Kino. And uh, I, for a joke, pulled the Kino ticket off uh, the table, uh, off the little thing on the table, and I handed a crayon to Rob Pike, and I said, mark eight numbers. And Rob went, pop, 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 pop. And I took out a $10 bill, handed it to the Kino runner with the $10 bills, bill, and she walked away. And Rob looked at me and said, you know, if we win, both our careers are over. <laughs> if they find out we played Kino, I can no longer work at Bell Labs, and you can no longer do bullshit. <laughs> we are done, done, done. So let's sit here and hope we don't win. <laughs> and it worked. Oh, good. We didn't win. But we go out for the unveiling of the slot. And some people from here are here, right? Were a few of you here? Yeah, a few of you were here. And uh, we went to the unveiling of the slot machine. And it's big. It's gigantic. And uh, pen, grab it high up, pull toward you and up, and throw it behind you. Now, the important part of this story is Glenn told Teller nothing. Because <laughs> Teller would just do it right naturally. <laughs> and then Glenn told me again. And then Teller got there, and Teller went over and quietly rehearsed. He went over, saw where the Velcro was, put his hand, and got ready for the unveiling. I myself did not. I was monkeying around with people. So we got there, they, you know, the guy from the company and the guy from the Rio announced how happy they were that we had slot machines. And we went over and uh, we uh, pulled the thing down and then they said, we should play, right? Now I'm telling you, the long suffering Glenn is an amazing manager. It's a wonderful, wonderful job for Penn and Teller. But I tell you, I was very, very tempted to fire him. I was telling you, Sinatra would have fired him like that. I said, I, give me, someone give me some money to play the slot machine. I held my hand up like this. Someone give me some money. I'm in a working suit. I have nothing in my pockets but tricks in case we need to do those, right? But I got no money and no ID or something, anything, right? If I need ID, I go, look at the side of the fucking building. I'm 300 feet tall and my name's above me. That's my ID. My crotch is the size of five rooms. <laughs> ID. <laughs> so I don't have ID with me or money. So I do this kind of Sinatra-like gesture. Someone give me money to play the game. Glenn puts a $5 bill in my hand. $5 <laughs> bill in my hand. Headliner. Longest headliners in Vegas. Headlined longer than Sinatra in Vegas. Longer than Dean Martin in Vegas. The longest headliners in Vegas history holds up his hand in a disgusting alpha male gesture that should probably get me boycotted for the rest of my life just for holding up that gesture. And he puts in my hand a five 
As he's putting that in my hand, the five, the guy from the slot machine company comes over, puts in a crisp hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. Hundred. That's where it should be. Thanks for the placeholder. Yeah. Here's your five bucks yeah. back. The five was just thrown down. I hold the hundred. I put the hundred in the machine. Now I should say at this point, because it may come out later, I don't want to say it, but if it comes out later, yeah. it's better to get out in front of it, as they say, uh-huh. as nobody in Donald Trump's administration says. <laughs> get out in front of it. Um, it's a penny slot. Hmm? I'm, it's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a penny slot. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's a penny slot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a $100 bill, yeah. which means I can play it a million times. <laughs> Right? 100,000? 100,000 times. 100,000 times? Fight, 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 fight out. 10,000 10, people fight out with 100,000 people, and whoever wins the fight wins regardless of the math. What is it? 10, I could play 10,000 times. I, I was going to say 10,000. But there's a button on the machine that says Max Bet, uh. who is not the designer of the machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Matt... It's actually Max Bedowinski. He shortened it to be more American. Max Bet. I hit that button, and it then plays 300 pennies, which is... Oh, well, you're all jumping in on that one, aren't you? You couldn't multiply by three orders of magnitude, but oh, you can do that. Okay, 300, 300, 300, 300 pennies is $3. I hit the Max Bet once, I lose. I hit it again, jackpot. <laughs> and it's funny, when the machine has your picture on it and you hit the jackpot, people don't cheer. <laughs> people are ambivalent. People say words like fix, cheat, bullshit. I won $286, and my ex-manager and (laughs) ex-wife paid the guy back his hundred. And the slot machine guy was pretty surprised because I won the jackpot. It's great. It's going forever. Because if you win $287 on a penny machine, that's a big win. Yeah. Win and win and win and win and win and win. You know, it's like it's like North Korea. It sounds like, and they're there's just it's big surprises. They're just huge. Everybody's gathering. So, like around. right next to us is a Japanese slot machine. that's like, hey, hey, watch it, watch it, stop it. And the Chinese slot machine pouring in more money. Um, <laughs> and the American slot machine going, nan, 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 nan. bet you can't hit me with a nuclear bomb. Um, and uh, it's big. It goes forever. Yeah. So uh, the local TV crews are there. Local press, there. they're all snapping pictures quick because I got the winner winner thing going on behind me and I win. And then showing that I'm not the ideal customer. I hit cash out instantly. <laughs> I'm done, won the money. <laughs> and, and my wife and my manager pay the guy back his hundred. They both did it? They, yeah, did I he mean, get it with 200? I, they both went over to do it, and then between yeah, them, yeah. they got 100 bucks, which they were able to come up with, but not when I had the photo op of give me some money. <laughs> then a five goes in my hand. <laughs> Immediately, when it's giving my money away to them, yeah. they got. So uh, uh, I won, which felt really, really good, but it did not feel as good as the other part of this. What can feel better than me winning? You know enough about me. Oh. Teller went next. No, no. Teller's next to me on the next machine. Oh, and Teller, Teller. Uh, Say the word. Lost. Yeah! <laughs> teller loses his whole hundred. Boom, 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 boom. Just sits there, just kind of, oh, trying to do photo ops with, oh, I'm having fun playing. I'm having fun playing. I'm having fun playing. All the money gone. We have a complete 50-50 partnership. You know how much of that $286 he got? How much? Not a fucking dime. <laughs> Fuck him in the neck. Fuck him like the guy who said silver. <laughs> Not a penny. And I go to the uh, machine, and I uh, 
ca I cash out uh, the $286 and change, and I get my money, and my wife's standing there and says, oh, you can give me the 100 back now. <laughs> no. That 100 came out of your money. That came out of your money. This money is mine. I took that money. I didn't put it into a house fund. That's not playing for plastic shit for the, for the children. That money goes to me. Dad gets that money alone. That's it. That's all. And that money goes into my special little cigar box fund in my room that is labeled Tran Hooker. <laughs> that's, what it's, that's what that's saving up for right there. Did so, you say train hooker? Yeah, I said train hooker. That's a specific hooker. Very specific. <laughs> Ready Rich turned me on to it. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong, hello. Toot toot. <laughs> <laughs> the extra ain is for extra train. Um, it's a whole new meaning for pull train. Anyway, um, I, I want to talk about this. Many people, many, many people are uh, hot under the collar that it's possible that Russia, through Facebook and through the uh, pr president, yeah. um, affected our elections over here. Mm -hmm. That a foreign power would come in and whether it's individual citizens working together or the government doing a whole sponsored thing, they may have affected the outcome of the presidential election. Now, we all know that turnabout is fair play. Yes. So I'm suggesting, do you, can you really tell the difference between Finland and Russia? Me? Yeah. No. Me neither. So we're going to attack Finland <laughs> for what the Russians have done to us. Um, you know the No God Band? Your wife sings in the No God Band? Absolutely. Band. Do you know there's dancers in the No God Band? I do. One of those dancers is Carolyn Gale? Yes. Do you know another one of those dancers? I believe it's uh, burlesque, Finnish burlesque sensation, Cindy Sky. Yeah, Cindy Sky is one of the dancers in the No God Band. She is now uh, trying to win a pinup competition in Finland. Yep. And Emery Emery, who is a uh, boyfriend to uh, Cin Cindy Sky. Yeah. I don't even know where Cindy, so I don't know. Cindy, but Sin, Cindy. Sky, Sky, what's her name, Skydy Sin? Cindy, yep. Uh, Cindy, Cindy Sky. Sky. You'll know her, platinum blonde hair and stuff. She is doing this thing that you vote on. Yes. Voting in Finland. And we have got a hack on the system that Americans can vote. Yes. Not much of a hack. Americans you are allowed to You can type in vote. the web address. The only <laughs> barrier is it's completely in foreign language. Yeah, it's in the foreign language. So Emory's idea was, this is not to help out a friend of the show. Yeah. This is to get back. If you don't think the yeah. Russians should have affected our election, this is your way to speak out. Yeah. And this is a political thing we're doing, not a favor for a friend. Absolutely. Tell them what to do. Tell them what Emory says to do. If you go to tinyurl.com slash sin will win. Say uh, it again. Tinyurl.com. Tinyurl.com. Slash sin will win. Slash sin will win. S-I-N-W-I-L-L-W-I-N. Yes. And is you're going to see a bunch of weird words. They're words that aren't words. Yeah. <laughs> They're words that like a child playing with an alphabet would make up. That's what we call finish. But I'm going to tell you, scoops are going to like this at the end. Uh, so uh, you just simply scroll, scroll down to the bottom. You'll see a bunch of photos. Uh -huh. Find Sin's photo. Which is easy. She's, she's the best. She's the best. And she also has platinum blonde hair. And she's with a motorcycle. What more do you want? If I asked you, name your favorite things in the world, platinum blonde hair, motorcycle, certainly in the top 15. Certainly. Click on that, or like that photo, click like on that it, photo. Like the photo, click it. Little round circle, put your mouse over there. Scroll to the bottom, and there's going to be a button. A button. Now, this is the hard part. There's this a the button really at hard the bottom. Part. But that button says... Ashelfrush. Yeah. Ashelfrush. <laughs> Which is A umlaut, A umlaut, then... The word nest. <laughs> Followed by another A with an umlaut. For some reason, that button counts your vote. <laughs> umlaut. A umlaut, A with an umlaut. A umlaut. umlaut. Nest. A with an umlaut. Yeah. It's at the bottom right there. You find it. You do that. And we can get... We can get vengeance against Russia, which is a lot like Finland, and that they speak another language, and they're over an ocean. Yeah. And there's, never, there's certainly more of us than them. 
we can win this one easy. And she's she's already in second place. So all you're doing is pushing it over the top. Yeah. For someone who was in the No God Band as a dancer. She's only 1% behind right now. Okay, so uh, during just the people in this room, you don't have to listen. We're going to say nothing funny or interesting. Pull out your cell phones. <laughs> Go right now. But one vote every 24 hours. You can do that until it's done, yeah. Multiple browsers, too. Multiple browsers, too. This, you're, you're, you're cheating. You're cheating for this, right? You know. Okay, so okay. what he said was you can uh, do multiple browsers in every 24 hours. So she's already won, but that doesn't mean your vote doesn't count. Go People who are it. voting for uh, Hey Scoops in the Best of Vegas category are familiar with the multiple browser <laughs> format. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, by so the way, else. just to fill you in, uh, uh, when women refer to their nether regions as their nest, uh -huh. it grosses Paul Mattingly out. Really? Yeah. Why is that? It's just a specific word. Like some people don't like the word moist. I like the word, See? I like a moist nest. <laughs> and I say that with no discomfort whatsoever. I'm going to read you, uh, I write like a 16-year-old um, like mall girl. I write a journal every day. Right. And I have since 1985. And I go back and read 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and one year ago every morning. And uh, I try to see if, you know, it gives me some perspective on my life. And I, there's no jokes in this. I really like it. But um, I hardly ever find something um, that I love that I've written uh, in this. In your journal. Right. But 10 years ago, I wrote this. And I love this. I, I just think I want to do some sort of performance thing with this. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to explain the background because the background doesn't matter. I'm just going to read. I've taken this out of context, but the context is just a big business lunch. Okay. okay? <clears throat> the waitress forgot to bring my creamed corn. She said she was sorry. And Bernie said, don't even let the words cross your lips. It's already forgotten. It's nothing, nothing. It's all beautiful like you. And then in the middle of another rant, it's all just one big rant, I guess, with him. About 10 minutes later, he said, all these things in the past, we can't change, like the stupid fucking waitress forgetting the fucking corn. I love that. <laughs> I love the fact that it's this, we don't care, we get it over, and then 10 minutes later, it's still eating at him. I just love that. I just love the waitress forgot the cream corn. I actually didn't care. He made a big show of not caring. And then it probably to this day eats away at him. And that will be the basis of some bit that I do in the oh, future. It's that a great little bit. paragraph. It's a really nice thing. I also want to talk about Richard Turner. You know, the, um, the Richard, guy. He was on Fool Us Blind Guy. Mm -hmm. Did he the came, poker hands. He came to do his show at our show, along with. <clears throat> Hold on, don't rush me. Andre Pushinitska. Pushinitska. Andre Pushinitska. Pushinitska. And I said to Andre Pushinitska backstage, I said, How is my pronunciation? Pushinitska. And he said, Needs a little more P at the front. You know what I said? Pa fuck you. <laughs> Andre Pushinitska. Andre's the guy who put the headphones on Allison, right? And he yes. sat in your seat. Yes. Andre Pushinitska. Yeah. And he did a nice show. And then Richard Turner came out and blew the room away. But I want to talk about, and I guess we'll wait till next week, I mean, until Wednesday, because we should finish up here. What he, uh, what he did was. Um, Are you teasing the next episode? I am. I'm teasing the next episode. Wow. Uh, Podcast one's going to feel like you all, you all grows up. I am. I don't know something. No. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about Richard Turner having a one on one sincere conversation with me after the show and how I reacted. But for right now, that was Penn Sunday School. That was Penn Sunday School. Cha cha cha. And to our listening. You can come naked. stuff coming up and then the week after we got a really good one boy we lost the beat and then the next week is me talking to kurt anderson who wrote a great
great book called Fantasyland. I'll do that one by myself. That was Fan Sunday School. You know I love you.